<laughs> Why is it so hot? <sighs> Do you want in? Oh, okay, maybe not. Hi guys, oh my gosh, it has been so long since I've sat here and talked to you all. And if you've been following along, then you'll know exactly why that is. Um, but if you just clicked on this video and you have no idea who I am, then hello. <laughs> my name is Jackie, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I had a dog walking and dog sitting business for a number of years there, and I've since moved to Houston, Texas to get a graduate degree. Today I really wanted to talk about the differences that I've noticed in dog sitting in Canada versus the US. That's a really broad thing to say because I did find that it's really different depending on which city you're talking about. So I'm mostly just gonna talk about Toronto versus Houston because they're similar population wise and those are just the two places that I know best. I also did a little bit of investigation on Instagram and Facebook from you guys about your opinions on all of these things and I found some really interesting stuff. 68% of you said that you use a sitter over a border for your dog when you go away. 80% say that the sitter doesn't have to be with the dog 24 seven, but that they shouldn't be left for long periods of time on their own. And 80% of you said that when choosing a dog sitter, it's more about the vibes than the experience that they have, as long as they have at least one year of experience with dogs. Price wise, it was also really cool to see what you guys all said based on what city you're from. So we got anywhere from 30 to $40, which is in Houston, to $85, per night in New York City. And the things that you guys found the most important when looking for a dog sitter is flexibility and reliability, and the dog liking the person, and pup dates. Yeah, somebody said pup dates, and I just love that term, so I'm definitely gonna be putting that into my repertoire. Let's talk about peak times for dog sitting, because I do find that this is a big difference. So in Canada, people go away in the winter because it's cold for a large portion of the year, so a lot of people, they plan their holidays in the winter so that they can go someplace warm. Also in Canada, it's quite easy for parents to pull their kids out of school. There's no repercussions from that, so you can go away for two weeks at a time in the winter, and there's no problem, whereas it's different in the US. It's a lot harder, at least in Texas, for parents to pull their kids out of school. There's only a certain number of days that you're allowed to be for, to be not in school and you have to have it validated. So a lot of parents will only have their vacations in the summertime when the kids aren't in school or in other times like Thanksgiving or Christmas, stuff like that. So if you're a dog sitter, that's when you can kind of expect to be your busiest. Price-wise, I have found actually that both cities are pretty similar when it comes to price for dog sitting. To have a sitter come and stay in your home or for your dog to go and stay in a sitter's home here in Houston it's and keep in mind that this is really different depending on who you have but it's around $40 which is just over $50 in Canadian dollars which I would say is pretty standard and then to have your dog go to a boarding facility here in Houston it's about $65 which is around 85 Canadian so prices are pretty similar I would say and that's gonna be really different depending on depending on who it is that's watching your dog because that can vary so drastically. I find a big difference actually in the expectations of a dog sitter and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the cities are just so vastly different. So in Toronto, it's a lot of big like apartment buildings. There's not a lot of spreading out, which means that there's not a lot of room to build these big dog parks or even for people to have backyards. A lot of people don't have any space for dogs to run around. So the expectations of a dog sitter, they mirror that. So you're not expected to take the dogs out on these big, huge, long excursions because you just don't have it there. Whereas here in Houston, there are amazing dog parks and spaces to run around. Like, Pretty much every neighborhood and apartment building has a dog park of some kind. So I find that the expectation here is that you as a sitter are taking the dogs to these big excursions and these big like places to run around and also people just have backyards here. So you have access to all those things. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video and join me. I really would love to hear all of your opinions about this because I think it's something that's ongoing and it can be so different and so interesting depending on where you are. So let me know about it. Um, make sure that you follow me on all my socials. I'm going to put them below right now. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!